Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 21 and round 5 of our MotoGP career mode is upon us and it's time for Le Mans for the French GP Grand Prix. So looking at the grid we have the Ducati 1-2 of Milan Bagnaia with Quattro joining him on the front row, Mia Grant and Zarco on the second, Vinales, Rins Espargaro, Morbidelli, Nakagami, Oliveira, Martin Espargaro, Binder, Marquez, Rossi, Lacuona, Marquez, Petrucci, Salvadori, Bassinini, Marini, the back of the grid. So looking to the red lights, and we'll wait for them to disappear, and away we go! Oh, that's a good start, actually. I felt like he had a good jump off the line there. Power setting three enabled. Joan Mir got a good start as well. We're going to get sandwiched in between a Ducati and a Yamaha, but look at Grant charging up into the front position with the whole shot goes to the man on your screens right now. The number 47, the world champion, takes the whole shot here in dramatic fashion here in Le Mans. So brilliant start. It's exactly what we needed. There's been a yellow flag out already, so not everyone made it through safely into the first couple of corners. So into La Chapelle for turn six. We have two and a half tenths of a second, three tenths of a second, four tenths of a second lead to Jack Miller and Quattararo. So we've just pinched over at the front. We couldn't take the pole position. We couldn't get on the front row in the qualifying. But never fear, we still made it to the front at the start of this Grand Prix. So power setting three has been enabled to give us that extra oomph to get out there. But now it's time to drop it down to power setting two and uh, go wide for Garage Vert, it seems. No, it's all right. I thought we were going to go wide, but we managed to recover quite nicely. So as far as the tyres are concerned, there was no gamble like we did in Jerez because that was just too much stress on the heart on that one because that was just really, really tough to hold back against Johan Zarco and to fight with the likes of Maverick Vinales. Of course, that race was absolutely phenomenal, so I would advise you to check that out if you haven't already. But for the time being, I did go for my trusted favoured combination of the medium front and rear. So for the time being, we've got the lead. It's exactly what I wanted to do. We're into power setting two, saving power setting three when and when we require it. So I'll use it if needed. But for the time being, across the line, we will go to start the second lap. And we are leading by three tenths of a second. So by all means, this is not a comfortable lead or easy done. And that's it. Job done. See you in the next video. We still have uh, a lot of work to do. And four tenths of a second being the gap to Jack Miller, of course, in the flip-flop section. We're not sure what's going to happen when he brings on acceleration towards the middle part of the track. But going into La Chapelle, very controlled, very concise for the sixth corner here of round five in this MotoGP Championship. So, quick update for you. Things are looking relatively status quo. So, Miller in second, Quattararo third, Bagnaia, Mia, Zarco the enemy, the rival. Vinales and wins in 8th position. So as long as we stay as we are, we can't go wrong. But I'm still a little bit concerned because it's one mistake and Miller's going to be shoving that red Ducati right up past us and we're probably not even going to know what hits us. So we have to stay focused and I've got to be honest with you, I do struggle with leading Grand Prix when they're this close. I do get a little bit nervous and there you go. I've braked a little bit too early. Jack Miller, the Thriller Miller, is right on my tail now. He wants to get on through and to lead this Grand Prix. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing to lose the lead. I can always chase them down, but I may have to use a bit of power setting three, or I might get myself into a bit of a battle that I'm not quite prepared for. I'm, I'm expecting to just lead here from the front. That was the goal since Le Mans came up. I do love this circuit, and I do feel very, very comfortable here, so we're going to see how that goes on. Quick mention to a video that I've got coming next week, because honestly, guys, you don't want to miss it. It includes a ride-through penalty. And that's all I'm going to say. So, MotoGP 21, ride through penalty. I'll see you there next week at some point. But for the time being, we need to focus on this Grand Prix because we are only leading by six tenths of a second from the Australian and the Frenchman Fabio Quattararo. And I honestly expect a little bit more from Fabio Quattararo. I don't know why video game Quattararo isn't always up there at the front. I guess for MotoGP 22, whenever that lands, we're going to see a very, very competitive and fierce Fabio Quattararo. Seems Johan Zarco got all the treatment in the sense of the fierce and aggression. For, uh, for MotoGP 21, because of course, every single race we seem to get in a, involved with him, he goes really aggressive and gives me the big don't argue, unless uh, we give it him back like we did in Jerez. But onto the right hand side we'll go, the gap has now gone down to one tenth of a second, oscillating somewhat, but now it's down to the smallest it has been for quite a while, so coming out of the corner there, we lost a little bit of time, 46 thousand of a second, Miller may be having a lunge up into the left hand side here, not quite close enough is the Ducati Desmond Sedeci, but you never know when he's going to strike, so we just got to keep him at bay for the time being. So onto the right hand side, we'll go now for 
turn 11 for the Espleurs and there is Jack Miller, goodness me, I stuttered a little bit and Jack Miller took straight over at the front or at least almost, I see Fabio Quattrano's front tyre as well, the Michelin front tyre in the bottom left hand corner of the screen and a full Ducati with two Michelin tyres on the right hand side, so there's a lot of things to look at right now and to tell you what, this is not going to be the smooth country stroll I expected to have here in Le Mans, quite the opposite in fact, Jack Miller is now in pursuit, where is he going to make a lunge, he definitely will, it's just where is he going to make it? When is he going to make it? Too many questions and not enough answers. Quattararo now has been booted off the rostrum spots, it seems, as Pekko Banyaya has put himself involved into this battle for the victory. But it's also a little bit concerning because two Italian manufacturers going at it up at the front here with Jack Miller and Pekko Banyaya working together to try and dethrone the man who is holding on to the World Championship. The man who should have been wearing a number one plate, some people think. But for me, I rather get rather fancy the 47. So coming out to Musée now as I have a chance to breathe. We'll go very, very hard on the brakes for Garage Vert. Are we still going to be in the lead when we make the corner? It looks like we are for now, but Jack Miller super tight to the apex. Lovely done, almost. I expect... Oh, no, no, there he definitely is. He still is. I might have to go up to power setting two. Well, excuse me, power setting three. Do we have enough on the brakes? Oh, looking like top rack Razgati Oglu there. How hard will we be breaking there? As Jack Miller... Oh, it leans on him almost. Jack Miller is now into the lead. Excellently done. Miller round the outside and then up on the inside. Excellently done for the Australian. That is fantastic. Yes, I probably should have said Jack Miller style on the brakes because he likes a good old stoppy as well. But for the time being... Now we are into second position. Where are we going to fight back? Can we fight back? Jack Miller was rapid in the qualifying session. Can we regain our composure and get to the front once again? So power setting two is still applied. We might be able to go around the outside. I could use power setting three, but for the time being two will be enough. I do feel as we go very firm on the brakes with the th third corner. Still not close enough. Can we get the exchange on the right side? I really wanted to go for it then. And we do actually go for it. Beautifully done as I brought on the acceleration rather early there. And somewhat abruptly, he's seen the Aprilia just snap up on the inside but Jack Miller there he is once again ladies and gentlemen we have another fight on our hands here today and I tell you what I'm ready for it the voice isn't ready for it by no means I feel a bit groggy but never mind about that going into Musée for the left hand of a turn seven let's get in behind Thriller Miller let's have a lunge going into garage for are we going to be brave enough do we have the cojones not quite not quite able to get into the inside but we might have the inside line now we're very close to oh beautifully done very close, almost pushing Jack Miller wide. We were so close. And now we finally get through. Repositioning on the chair. Now it's time to continue with the commentaries. We go on the left-hand side. Do we hold on going in Shimano buffs? We do. Status quo resumed. Panic over. We have the lead once again. But it is only two tenths of a second. So one little mistake will bring Jack Miller straight on through once again. So now into the left-hand side for turn 12. We must be very careful breaking into the 12th corner because of course I met my demise in the qualifying session quite early in that particular corner breaking too firm on the front end but now going across the line are we going to respect oh wow we responded extremely well we retaliated with shining colors there a 131033 for Matt Grant right now and if thinking about colors and you want to represent the color of Dr. Ace you can buy the merchandise with the link down in the description below. Red Bubble has all the t-shirts and clothing etc and a little bit of accessories as well for Christmas. So on to the right hand side for La Chapelle as that little self plug-in is now finished. A shameless self plug if anything as we now have a six tenths of a second lead to Jack Miller. Have we got it in our bag now? That little bit of a battle, that little bit of a ding dong just a moment ago with Jack Miller has woken me up somewhat. It's lit the fire beneath me and I think now is the time to strike. Maybe consider just jumping into power setting three and just absolutely blasting away. But where's the fun in that? Maybe keep it in power setting two and keep it somewhat close. But going into garage, but it looks like the confidence is back. Could we finally get back into the 130s for the very first time since practice on what well, would technically be on Friday, but of course it was just four hours ago in the sense of the video format. But onto the right hand side, cutting the corner a little bit there. Ah, 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 ah. A little bit of a slap on the wrist for Grant on that one because that was a little bit too close for comfort. So going across the green, not exactly what we're trying to produce here as we go into the left hand side for the 12th corner. This lap time will be an improvement once again. So this is going to be fine and dandy for the man on board, the Aprilia, but not so good. For the two factory Ducatis in second and third right now. So across the line we will go. It's an improvement to a 130-696. And I tell you what, 
that could have been enough for pole position. That's how good we are right now, even with power setting 2 enabled. So onto the left-hand side for this wonderful section of track, up by a whole second. Now, you've heard me say it before, and you're going to hear me say it again. Once you get that second lead, you break the resolve from the person in second, and therefore we should have this one in the bag. And I tell you what, I think my voice would definitely accept that today, because it's getting a little bit sore, and I'm happy with the result so far. But eight tenths of a second is still in the ball pit. There's still games to be played when the gap is eight tenths of a second. You never know what can happen going into the next couple of corners. Of course, Shimano Buff, a notorious difficult corner to get right, could be very interesting for the rest of this Grand Prix. So eight tenths of a second is the gap and it's still hanging on as we are the fastest man on track right now with the 130.696 and even this lap is still going to be quicker than what we've been setting out for the past couple of laps. So this could be fine and dandy. A job well done. Let's find out as we go into the right-hander and for the S blurs, for the blue S's for us English folk. And then onto the left-hand side for turn 12. Nice and tight to the apex. I do like that corner. I love Le Mans. I can honestly say no more praise for Le Mans. I just love it. I think it's a fantastic, fantastic track. Would love to go there one day. Maybe one day we will. It's on the bucket list. So onto the right-hand side we go. Across the line we will go. We are back into the 131s, but I think we're all right because I think we can turn it on if needed and if required but the start of the penultimate lap it's a seven tenths of a second lead to Jack Miller and Banyaya behind so it doesn't look like they're engaging in any sort of infighting it looks like Banyaya is happy to sit in third and Miller in turn in second place but as far as the lap times go not my best couple of lap times here in Le Mans but I'm still kind of happy with the past couple from the, the seventh lap sixth lap and fifth lap as well but now onto the left hand side for Muse bring it in nice and tight run it a little bit deep but you kind of have to to get the cut back to get it up lined up and nicely so onto the left hand side don't go too wide there you might get a penalty as we then go very firm on the brakes for garage vert going in nice and tight to the apex beautifully done that's a nice and calm gesture that we wanted to do in the qualifying but i could never seem to get it right i just didn't have the concentration didn't have the focus and didn't have the mojo and that's very important when doing qualifying laps i, I struggle in qualifying compared to the races I can do a better job of maintaining the focus and I guess in qualifying you have to maintain that 120% all the way through compared to the race you can make a few mistakes and you can claw time back but uh, as speaking about clawing time back nothing to get too excited about but the gap has dropped to six tenths of a second has Jack Miller been saving something for this final lap he has taken a couple of tenths of a second away from us it's nothing too special but it's something to concern ourselves with nonetheless so let's let's focus on this one let's give it everything we've got for the final lap here in Le Mans for round five of our MotoGP World Championship this could be back-to-back -back wins for the man on your screen right now and this would be crucial for our championship standing and what I will take most pride in though is knowing that Johan Zarco is not going to feature on the podium unless there's going to be an absolute collapse for Jack Miller, Bagnaia, Quattro and Mia I don't think Johan Zarco will be featuring on the podium here today so that is going to in turn give us a bit of a, a bit of a rivalry a bit of a bonus for us in our rivalry with Johan Zarco because of course if he isn't going to be on the podium in his home country in his home GP we're going to take the spoils in this track but I do like Johan Zarco but the aggression and the rivalry has been brewing for two seasons has almost come to its boiling point as we now go into garage verts for the uh, I'm getting a bit concerned though, four tenths of a second is the gap to Miller, is he going to just spring upon us at the final corner? I don't think it's going to be able to, as we break very firm and very late for the Shimano buffs, we've made a little bit of a mistake there, cutting the corner, we've got to slow it down somewhat, we don't want to give a penalty, five tenths of a second, two tenths of a second is the gap to Jack Miller, have I just blown this one? Please don't tell me I've just bottled this one, Recordemont is beckoning a move for Jack Miller, I cannot allow that to happen, turn 14, is the last overtaking opportunity. Is it going to happen here? Not quite. Jack Miller's not close enough. I think that little bit of a scare is gone. Goodness me. That was a bit worrying. But I think we still have enough in us to have a big wheelie across the line as Grant takes victory number two of the season. So the end of that one, the French Grand Prix goes victory to the way of the man on board the Aprilia, the number 47. Matt Grant takes the win with Jack Miller and Pekka Bagnaia on the podium. So let's see how the championship has been affected, and it has been affected thus. Johan Zarco, three points clear from Pekka Bagnaia, and just five 
clear from championship rival Matt Grant. 19 points clear from Joanne Mir and 38 clear from both Miguel Oliveira and teammate Jorge Martin. So looking at the team championship and Pramat Racing still leading the way just by 15 points ahead of Ducati Lenovo team and 22 ahead of Aprilia. So back to back victories for the man on your screen right now. Grant has done it once again. A thrilling battle in Hareth and somewhat quite thrilling here in Le Mans. It wasn't the victory we wanted in the sense of just dominating the field, but I'm still happy with how it went. We had a chance of domination, but unfortunately I don't think we had that true concentration like we've had in previous years. But honestly, big, big win in the sense of the championship, putting ourselves just five points behind championship rival Johan Zarco and only three behind Peko Banyaya, it's not too bad. But upon the note guys, I will leave you with the podium celebrations. Thank you very much for watching the video. I really appreciate all the likes and all the views and all the comments as well. Please consider subscribing because I'm on the road for hopefully 2,500 subscribers before the end of the year and I would really like to achieve that goal. But upon the note guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.